Hi, my name is Adam. And uh, one of the things that I like to do is walk through neighborhoods, through the woods, through parks, and on mountains. I like to walk. So join me, and together we'll take a step to see the world. Today on Walking with Adam, I'm headed to a small, unincorporated part of Washington County called Kenton. Kenton was named after a pioneer known as Peter Kent, and during the times of the Donation Land Claim Act of 1850, his land claim, located near the Tualatin River, was one patent amongst a total of around, 
7,437, issued prior to the act expiring only five years later in 1855. Kinton was established near a ferry built by a man named Peter Scholl, because Peter was a popular name back then, I guess, uh, sometime around 1848 across the river. Scholl operated the ferry for years before building a toll bridge which lasted into the 1920s. Today, it's not the 1920s anymore, and the bridge has been gone for about well, close to 100 years. But the road running through Kenton is named Shoals Ferry Road for that reason. There was a shortly lived post office here that operated for about seven years before closing in 1903. These days, Kinton is served for the Beaverton Post Office, and indeed, it even has the zip code of 97007, which used to be my zip code before the state decided to shuffle things around a few years back. And besides the school in the Grange Hall, the latter of which still sees use, uh, most of the old Kinton buildings seem to be gone. However, there may be some remnants of buildings hidden away on private property close by. Speaking of private property, the dilapidated school is on private property too. The landowners uh, don't take kindly to the constant visitations that their property gets either. And honestly, who can blame them, you know? Um, the school is listed on seemingly every abandoned or haunted website covering Oregon. And it's gotten to the point that visitors are breaking in and vandalizing the old schoolhouse and the surrounding property. And that is no way <laughs> to uh, try to get welcome. Now, this was explained to me by the very attractive and slightly pregnant daughter of the property owner as they expressed their distaste over my um, investigation and told me in no uncertain terms that, though their guard dog liked me, I was not welcome. Now, as my own home has uh, been suffering from being vandalized itself in an attempt to make me put the place up for sale over the years, I knew exactly how they felt, and I actually had no problem walking away at that point. Uh, today, the school is surrounded by a fence. In fact, this whole property here is surrounded by a fence. That fence is there to tell people not to cross the fence, obviously. Um, if you were a property owner, you have a liability to make sure your stuff, is, you know, if somebody gets hurt on your property, you're going to cover it. Now, this school is old. This school is open to the elements of North, Northwest Oregon. It's a wet place, a wet, damp, humid place where molds and fungus love to just thrive. This place, you can bet, is filled with that. So if you go in there, you're either going to have a very severe allergy attack from the spores, or you're going to suffer some respiratory illness afterwards, and that's a liability they probably don't want to deal with. Also, the place is dilapidated. It's, it's falling down on one side already. And if you're in there and the whole place collapses on you, that's another liability they don't want to have to deal with. In fact, after they told me that their place was recently spray painted, they said that they they're just tired of dealing with it and they're probably going to take the place down. Which is unfortunately a shame, but uh, I guess I can kind of understand it. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Walking with Adam. <laughs>